Hey, are you sure you want to make this video? You're probably going to deal with a lot of people saying how wrong you are and how much of a fucking sheltered mummy's boy you are. Uh, you can always pretend it's all a joke and people will be less inclined to take offense to whatever you're saying. So I'm sure it's going to be okay. South line. How oh, we all love Ye with Ye constant arrivals, Ye spacious interiors, and Ye sure footed quickness. Ye is a golden carriage that leads us to places we all want to be, and Ye is a blessing to all of us. Ye. Okay, no, seriously, there are many big problems with NSL, more so than any other line in the MRT network. I know you're probably going to say that we should be grateful that it exists and that the MRT is better than any metro systems around the world, but that doesn't mean that the MRT doesn't have any issues and that we shouldn't be looking to improve ourselves so that we can truly remain number one. Wait, we, we are not number one? That's just fake news. But anyway, in this video, I will discuss the current MRT landscape, how the NSL fits into it, and how it can be fixed. All while seated comfortably at home with no knowledge or experience of transit systems. What can go wrong? Let's first take a look at the system map. You'll notice that all lines have a distinct pattern. They all point to the city centre, going first from the residential and industrial outskirts to the business districts. This makes sense and is seen in most other transit maps. It's just a natural progression of where people want to go. First to work, then back home. But NSL doesn't play by that rule, not entirely. While the eastern section of the line goes directly from the north to the south, the western section is… more fucked. Passengers from their whole chunk of residential heavy stations are forced to funnel down to Drone East and then change to head into town, or funnel the other way towards Bishan. There is no direct way for these people to head towards the city, in part due to geographical limitations, and also in part due to the two lines that had to be merged way back when. Sure, you can say that Drone East is a convenient interchange, and that there are plenty of bus interchanges supplementing this section, but neither is an excuse. Both JE and Bishan are prone to massive overcrowding, and buses are not as efficient. We can't expect to ferry all our excess people with more buses and bus lines, because their capacity and speed isn't built for their intent. Hell, look at all these new shiny BTO projects along the NSL. How the fuck are all these people supposed to fit into the trains? To me, the NSL shares a lot of similarity with the line I've left out in this chart, the circle line. The CCL is a special line as it doesn't bring people into the city directly. It swoops around the island, connecting the gaps between lines and allowing people to easily switch lines to get to where they need to be without needing to crowd downtown where most of these interchanges are located. The people who actually exit the station completely at most of these stations are few as compared to the amount that just exit to transit. And that is kind of like the NSL. Depending on the timing, people either are trying to exit at JE slash Bishan or are trying to enter at the same stations. The difference is that NSL is more burdened than the CCL by two factors. It's a longer distance to travel, and services a higher traffic area with much more residents and other places of interest. Another key difference is that the NSL has barely any interchanges, and it doesn't go to a city directly, it goes around. And it causes a problem, because then there's a glut of passengers jamming the trains trying to get to the ends. The line needs more interchanges, more options to bring passengers to the city centre, so people can exit earlier and free out the train for the next round of people. I mean, who actually uses the CCL to go all the way around? From Paya Lebar to Harbour Front, or from Bayfront to Bishan? Nobody, but the poor residents of NSL have to commit their trip because there's no other option. The solution is simple and already slated. The Thompson East Coast Line going from Woodlands to Orchard, and the Downtown Line from UT to Boogies, both of which would immensely relieve congestion. The Cross Region Line, too, will further water up the NSL's interchange draw. With all these options included, you can see how the NSL kind of looks at the CCL now. Short haul trips to an interchange, and then away they go. All of these solutions are so far ahead in the future. Instead, LTA has decided to focus on what exacerbates the problem, adding stations. They've just built Canberra, and are planning to add Hume and Brickland, which are going to add back to the interchange drop. None of these are bad ideas on their own, but it definitely does burden the already inconvenient line. Just take a look at how much extra time one must spend in a year if you have to travel past Canberra for work every day. And take a look at how much LTA estimated the DTL and TEL connection will save. So why the hell are these delayed so much in favour of lines like the JRL? It 
doesn't go downtown and it's just going to burden Jurong East even further as it expects that people just want to hang out over there. See, LTA is playing the long game. It's hoping that all these problems will be solved by the time he has to build MRT lines. In JRL's case, it's praying that the so-called second CBD area will take off by then and that everyone will love using JRL to get to work and to find leisure. But it doesn't work that way. People who will live in Tenga in the future might not get to work in here. Some of them will work in the city and even further. These things aren't so strictly controlled and segregated. People go to where jobs they want are found. The jobs that they want don't magically appear right at their doorstep. Especially since the job market is so diverse and there are so many roles and positions and companies, not everything can be found in one area to satisfy all archetypes of workers. In fact, the JRL Tenga situation is not unique. LTA launched this 45-minute city plan, which is to say that all trades to work should only take 45 minutes. I hypothesize that their solution is not to bring people to the city faster, but to build more cities and offices outside of downtown, so people don't even need to travel the same distance, and therefore achieving that 45 minute goal. It's a great solution, but not the whole solution. People still need to cross the island. So what is the conclusion here? Is Westside truly the backside of Singapore? I guess I would say that Northside is so fucking god awful, so devoid of anything interesting, that it's not even in the running to compete against the Westies or the Easties. And they should say something.